My name is Rufila Matenje, and I'm one of your lecturers for TAX 2601. I'll be going through question 1 with you from assignment 3, tutorial letter 201. As I go through this question, I will share some of the important exam techniques that may help you in answering a theory question. The question in, we're going to go through comprises of two parts. The first part deals with the definition of gross income and the second part deals with the general deduction formula. Without wasting any further time, let's read our required. In part A of our question, we are required to discuss whether the receipt of advertising campaign would constitute gross income of Dinepe Fela as defined in the Income Tax 58, 1962 for the year ending 31 March 2014. Before you answer a theory question, it is very important that you plan the structure of your answer. As you go through the scenario, it may be a good idea to actually make notes, highlight or identify key information that will enable you to maximize marks. Let's read at our scenario. We are told that Dinepe Fela is a South African company that sells contemporary art. Dinepe's financial year ends on 31st March. On 28 March 2014, they sold an artwork worth 10,000 to an advertising company. The advertising company bought the artwork to hang in the reception area. Instead of paying cash for the artwork, the advertising company offered Dinepe an advertising campaign also worth 10,000. On 30 March 2014, Dinepe accepted the advertising campaign instead of cash. The campaign would consist of 10 monthly advertisements in a local newspaper commencing during April 2014. When reading this scenario, it is clear to see that this is a barter trade. So Dinepe Fela sold an artwork in exchange for an advertising campaign instead of cash. When you're answering a theory question, it is very important that you identify the section or sections that you need to discuss. After identifying these sections, you need to define them. And then you apply the scenario to your definition. And then lastly, you conclude. Let me demonstrate. In our solution, we defined on, a, on the left and then we applied the information in our scenario to the definition. And then in the end, we concluded. We used a, tab a tabular format for uh, structuring our answer, but you can do it however way you feel comfortable. Let's now look at the definition and the application. The definition of gross income says, in the case of a resident, amount in cash or otherwise. Dinepe Fela was a resident company because they clearly told us in the scenario that it's a South African company and they received advertising campaign which satisfies the otherwise part of the definition. Now the second part of the definition is received by or accrued to such a resident. When an amount is received by, it must be received for the taxpayer's own benefit. And if it is accrued to, it must be unconditional the, the, the taxpayer must be unconditionally entitled to the receipt. In this case, Dinepe is unconditionally entitled to the advertising campaign. It has therefore accrued to them for their own benefit. The next part of the definition requires that the amount must be received during the year of assessment. In the scenario, we were told that they accepted the advertising campaign on the 30th of March 2014. Even though the advertisements commenced in the next financial period, it is clear that by the 30th, 31st of March, the amount had accrued to Dinepe. And because we are, so as a result, it was within the year of assessment. In our solution, we clearly indicate that the artwork was sold on 28 March 2014 and Dinepe accepted on the 30th of March, therefore falling within the period ending 31st March 2014. The next part of our definition says, 
these receipts must be must exclude receipts or accruals of a capital nature. Dinepe is in the business of selling contemporary art, and contemporary art is their trading stock. Therefore, the accrual of the advertising campaign is not capital in nature. In other words, there's no enduring benefit. Now, after we've applied this definition, it's important that we conclude. Our conclusion must be consistent with our, definition, with our application. So in our conclusion, we said the requirements of gross income definition have all been met. Therefore, the receipt of the advertising cost constitutes gross income of Dinepe Fela for the period ending 31 March 2014. Now we're going to go to the second part of our question that deals with the general deduction formula. In this question, We are required to discuss whether expenditure and losses above are, deducted, are deductible by the Goloto Fela in terms of the general deduction formula, section 11A, read with section 23, for the year of assessment ending 31 March 2014. Where applicable, briefly make reference to the applicable case law. It is important to note that they said briefly, if all else fails, and you wonder how much to write, let the mark allocation be an indication. Let's look at the scenario. In this question, we're told Dikolo Fela is a residential property developer with a March year end. Dikolo's main business is selling residential property in a form of freestanding full title homes, sectional title townhouses, and full title stands. On 13 October 2013, Hurricane Sally struck one of the towns in which Tigoloto operates and destroyed four unsold townhouses with an original cost of 4.5 million in total. The insurance company paid Tigoloto 3.9 million in respect of this loss. Now, as I discussed earlier in the first part of the question, we apply the very same rules as we did in the first one. We first identify the issue at hand we define it, we apply it, and then we conclude. In this question, we needed to state that the Goloto is carrying on of trade. It's carrying on trade. Remember, this is part of section 23G. So we need to apply and say the Goloto is carrying on a trade of developing residential property. The next part of our definition, we start with section 11A. The expenditure on loss, there has been a 4.5 million loss that was incurred. It was actually incurred because the storm destroyed all the houses completely. This happened during the year of assessment because the storm happened on the 13th of October, therefore incurred in the current year of assessment. The next part of the definition requires that the amount be in the uh, production of income. When you're dealing with the production of income, it is important to identify the activity that produces income and the activity that caused the loss. If there is a causal link between the two, then we can say the expenditure or loss was incurred in the production of income. In the case of the Goloto, the erection of the houses is the trading stock of the company. Therefore, the destruction would be closely linked to the production of income. The next part of the definition requires that the expense or the loss must not be of a capital nature. The houses are trading stock of the company and therefore the loss is of a revenue nature. In other words, there is no enduring benefit. Now, so far, all the requirements of the general deduction formula have been met. However, they told us in the requirements that we need to consider section 23. Section 23C specifically prohibits the 
prohibits a deduction of a recoverable loss. In our scenario, they told us that the insurance company reimbursed the Goloto with 3.9 million. We need to state this in our solution. So, if you look at how we apply it, we state that 23C prohibits the deduction of the amount that has been recovered. The 3.9 of the 4.5 million loss has been recovered from the insurance. Therefore, only 600,000 is deductible. After that, we conclude as such. We say in our conclusion, the 4.5 million loss complies with all requirements of Section 11A. However, 3.9 is prohibited from being deducted in terms of Section 23. Therefore, only the 600,000 will be deductible in terms of the general deduction formula. I hope that has been beneficial to you. And I hope that when you answer a theory question, you will remember to identify the problem at hand, define it, apply it to the scenario, and then lastly, conclude. If you follow these easy steps, then you will have no problem in answering a theory question. Thank you for listening and keep well.